Thank you for putting my name up. You're welcome. Is there any way for me to change that so that stops coming up? You'd have to change it in your in Zoom settings. Uh, it's, okay. It's easier if you have, even if you sign up a free Zoom account, you can set up like how your name pops up. Okay, thank you. Yep. We, we still got, you know, five, six minutes, guys, before we really kick off. So I'll see all of you guys here soon. Okay. Yes, <laughs> that comes from being secure. <laughs> My grandmother, my grandmother used to call that the radio voice, the calm, soothing, inviting, <laughs> settling voice. Exactly. My mother just called the sexy. <laughs> No. Okay, guys, reel it in. Filter. Filter. <laughs> I just turned 60, and my in laws, my brother in law specifically, um, never has a filter on. And he's in his 80s. And I noticed that my father, who's 82, has that same missing filter. I've noticed it more as he ages, but I always have to use the word filter with a certain <laughs> age group of guys. No offense, but come on. Hey, Chris, I dropped a, a little chat in there in the chat box on Zoom for you. Chris H. Yeah, I, I, I joined the link, um, but uh, it, nothing happened, so I'm not quite sure. As you know, I'm not very familiar with Zoom, but uh, I don't think I made any mistakes. That's okay. Um, we can just, when this one wraps up, then we can, um, we can connect there. Sure, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Don't worry, John. I had to learn Zoom, Slack, Facebook, LinkedIn all at the same time, and I'm still struggling. Social media for me, I'm afraid, is, is still a mystery. Ditto. <laughs> I think most of us are still learning some of the other social medias like are pretty much, well, I'm going to say I have Facebook down, but enough to know how to navigate around it. Instagram, yeah, the same way. But when it comes to, um, oh, what's that other one we're working on? 
um, LinkedIn, uh, just kind of trying to find my way around, you know. Yeah, yeah, I need a roadmap. Sure, yeah, that's true. But I think once uh, once a person starts getting into it, you know, oh, there's Andrew. Yeah, you, can, you can go ahead. Okay. You know, we'll, I mean, we'll kick off officially in a second, but I think all social media, the thing about social media is that there's um, there's too many almost, and that's where you got to kind of judge where your audience is and then learn that and pick up yeah. maybe more than one. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, being on more than one platform. You're not going to be able to do everything. You just, you're not, especially now they're launching more and more and more. Um, it seems like almost monthly there's something new, you know, so. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew, the thing I don't really like about LinkedIn, and it's just a, it's just beginning to, I'm getting into it, is that it just seems like everybody's is the same. I mean, it's so structured and it's so similar. Yeah. So I did a training just the other day on exactly that and how to be different. I, I did, think I was, I did, in, I did two I, I was in the training, but okay. I haven't figured out how to actually physically do the things you showed to do or that we should be looking at. Okay. Well, I, I'd say go back through as part of it, you know, and then, I mean, the biggest key with things to do is Gary. Gary, I'm going to meet you. Gary's taking sales calls while we're, while we're on here. Um, and the biggest thing with LinkedIn is, is really just kind of, um, you know, paying attention to not making it a resume, but turn it into how can I connect with my audience? That's what people a lot of times kind of confuse. They think that branding is all about them. You know, branding is about how I can connect with my audience better. You know, it's not just about making you look good. You know, I mean, you can look as good as you want if you're not in front of the right people. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You know? Yeah, it, it, well, and, and part of that's because that, that over the years, people have told, you know, we have this idea what branding is, and it's, you know, people do McDonald's and Nike and Adidas and BMW and Tesla, as opposed to saying, you know, what is my audience want and how can I step into that role, right? There's a difference between advertising and, and direct response marketing. Right. And, and I kind of talked about that on the one train I did a while back with branding and um, and all of that. So anyway, we'll we'll actually we'll probably talk a little bit about it today because we have a guy that that is a rock star when it comes to all of that as well. So we'll go ahead and um, and kick off. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Pleasure to be with you today. I appreciate all of you guys being on here. Um, you know, these high performance calls Monday through Friday. Noon Eastern time, same time, same Zoom link every single day. This is why we're here is to help you guys develop yourselves, grow yourselves, learn a little bit more about success and goals and everything else. And then occasionally we get into branding and direct response marketing, social media and all sorts of other platforms. We want you to get better. And there's a lot of pathways to that. You know, we talk about developing um, developing success and ultimately, guys, it's your definition of success. It's not me standing here, here to, uh, to explain that to you. Now, um, today I mentioned we're going to have a guest. It's not Blake today, although uh, I did talk with Blake a little bit this morning. But next best thing. Um, so our guest today is one of our accelerator coaches. He's on the screen there. Well, he'll pop up here live in just a second. His name is Darren Morath. He is an absolute uh, rock star. He works with a lot of our members, um, you know, helping with with ads, with branding, with or um, organic reach, with their, with all sorts of different things. He's always super active in the group. He's been connected to Blake's team for quite a while. He started just like you guys did as a member, um, but always excited to have him on. He is uh, fun to talk to. He's great to listen to. Um, just like Carlos was saying at the beginning, he's just smooth, like, I don't know, Irish butter, English butter. I don't know. Darren, how, you know, cocoa butter. How are you smooth, my man? 
Darren, <laughs> join me. Pop on and uh, and let's let's hop in. Let's talk, guys. What we're going to be doing? We'll talk a little bit about branding. We'll talk about social media. We'll talk about different platforms. Um, any of those things, and then um, you know we'll do some open Q and A as well. There he goes, and of course he's he's as always decked out. Um, as always, how you doing, everyone? Talk about good to uh, see you. About branding and and staying you know true to the brand, right? Absolutely, representing, yeah. Representing the shield, as it were. Good so, stuff. Good stuff. Welcome, right. welcome. Thank you. All right. So. For those of you guys that don't know, let, let me go in. Uh, Darren, why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of your your background before and then online? And I know some of you guys have heard this, but a couple of people haven't. So who are you and why the hell should they listen to you? <laughs> so I'm Darren. I'm here in the UK. Uh, I used to work behind the scenes at ClickFunnels Expert Support, but before that, I used to work in aviation. Way, way, way back, I used to fly planes for a living. I've done the whole cabin crew or flight attendant thing as well, cabin management. Fast forwarding over to the to the moment where I actually ended up working with uh, ClickFunnels expert support behind the scenes as a non-employee here in the UK. I spent probably about two, three months working behind the scenes with them. And eventually I came into this program. I'm a product of the product. So just like just like you, you're coming into the program. This time last year, I had no idea about any of this. Nothing. So I've gone from customer to moderator to admin to the accelerator coach and the elite coach inside of this program. And that was all because of what Blake has trained. And all I did was just absorb everything that he's put out there, all the different iterations and come back, digest it, have my own take on it. Because now you can go rogue with the program or ClickFunnels and know it like it's the back of your hand. And if you know ClickFunnels like it's the back of your hand and you know your products, every conversation that I have now becomes a yes, yes, yes. So I'm simplifying the process over at the far end once you're finished. And that's where I see Carlos. I see you. I see Evie. We've got Jens in the room. A couple of people. Dara, I see you. A couple of people I do recognize. Hey, Rachel. It's been a while. Winnie. Good to see you. And Aga, I see you here too. All good. But um, those are the ones that are with me inside of the, uh, the Tuesdays and Thursdays, 4 p.m. EST. But, you know, you... It, it feels daunting to go through this to begin with. And I was like, what is this? And eventually it all started to become really clear. If you only watch, pause and do through the videos and go through things sequentially, everything becomes way, way easier. And I didn't see that. I was running all over the place. Like it was, a, it was like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. And that's where it becomes really, really, you know, murky. Don't be doing that. Awesome. So I'm uh, glad you're on. Uh, we had a good group last time. Um, I didn't get a chance to send out a big uh, blast this time to let everybody know, but we should end up with a, a few more still in. So, um, and we're recording. They can watch it again. So, um, guys, we we're gonna do Q and A. So feel free if uh, if you've got questions, go ahead and ask. So Darren does, you know, has run ads. Darren does a lot of um, organic reach with um, you know with his business as well and helps members do a lot of that too. So when you, you know, if you've got questions about branding and other stuff. So first question, Gabriel, I'm gonna mute you. Can we get some weird wind? Um, first question I got for you. What is, I seem to notice that, that one of the big hangups with people as they get going, they're trying to get launched. One of the biggest things is, man, I've got to film my video. I'm scared to film my first video, right? So um, what, what do you normally tell people at that point? Well, I see a lot of people tend to leave video to the last minute because they're not comfortable with being on camera. They don't know the tech and they're trying to figure out like what to say, what to do. We have a script. And so we're just plugging in playing and then just going through that. Now, the, the best advice I received was, the best advice I received was uh, when I spoke to somebody over in Singapore and I was doing audits, I did 40 plus audits during, during the first couple of months. Blake never asked me to do any of this. He never asked me to come back and help inside of the group or anything. I just decided to because I had all the answers because I worked behind the scenes of ClickFunnels. But at the same time, I was working and doing my own funnel. But with um, we, we just need to make sure that we, we, we're focused on the hardest tasks. And that's what I say on the onboarding calls. It's like, if you ever have a, a spare moment, have a look at your script, go through it. The worst thing that I ever did and if you're inside of the group right now, hashtag the invisible cap and go and see how, what I was doing. My hands were thrown, being thrown all over the place. I was nervous of a piece of plastic. 
my phone. And once it was recorded, that was it. I haven't even looked back at it really, apart from just talking about it now. It's still inside of the group. People still have a laugh at it as well, but it doesn't really matter. It's done. I still have that video inside of my members area. Just it's it's time to start to start doing. Start instead of trying, just do it. And once it's been done, you can look back at it and think, okay, well, can I change that later? Yeah, you can. Absolutely. You'll get better and better and better with what you need to do. The best advice I received was from someone in Singapore and he did it. I think it was in month four or five. In month four or five, um, I was auditing his funnel back then when I used to do that. And I asked him, how did you end up doing this whole, this, this masterclass video, which was about six or eight minutes long. And you only, you only cut it once right towards the end, maybe a minute, five or six. So how did you do that? And he told me that it wasn't his first language. It was his fourth or fifth language. And he said, all I did was just revise a little chunk each and every day for seven days. And when it came to it, I just hit record. What did I do? I didn't even prepare. I got really hyper thinking I needed all this tech. I need the green screen. I needed all this thing just because What don't. a lot of people do is they start doing that and then they put it. It's a way for us to create an excuse without having to do it. Right. Yeah. And so it, man, my camera's not right. Oh, the lighting's not right today. You know what? I, I'm bloated from food last night. Oh, this, this isn't, you know, so we do that just because it's that little bit of fear. And so what I tell people is, look, there's one way you can do it. You know, and I've talked with Blake about this, you know, we can have, you can have a thumbnail introducing it to begin with just so you've got something out, but just then just do the video, just do it. Just, just get out and do it. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be great to begin with. It is what it is, right? Videos are silly. You can't compare your first video to, you know, what Blake's doing or what some of those top marketers are doing. You know, you're not going to have the cool setup that we Darren's got now. Um, you know, I do shoot. I mean, I do an hour to, to four hours of live video every single day. I, I film dozens of courses for different types of brands. Like you can't compare your first attempt with someone else. And, and so don't worry about it, but it also makes it real. Right. And, and it doesn't have to be like this crazy edited and super techie and everything else. Yeah. Done is better than perfect. Just get things going. Well, first impressions, you don't want to, I say that, but you don't want it to look like shit excuse my French, you know, you, I mean, so there's that, but start practice on YouTube before you worry about the, the other videos, you know, just do French, something. French is not that bad language. French is not a bad, no, yeah, I'm sorry. Some of you guys are speaking French, you know, I, I, maybe I'll just cuss in Portuguese. We don't have too many Brazilians on. Um, I can survive so, it, guys. So, all right, so Darren, um, here, here's a question I get, and, and they were kind of talking about to begin with, you know, um, I've done some trainings recently for them on, you know, possibly using this on LinkedIn. We've talked a little bit about Instagram because there's businesses, you know, in different spots. When people start worrying about all of these different platforms, what do you tell them? I mean, I say, look, find where they are, start with one, get good at one. And then, hey, here's some other possibilities, but you know, you don't have to master everything. I yeah, like absolutely. that. I like absolutely. that idea. <laughs> what you want to be doing is really simplifying everything, everything that you do, try and get good at really just the one thing. And then when you get that, when you get really good at the one thing, even if you think that you're failing with it, just keep doing it. And I was horrible at messaging. I was horrible at like voice messages and zoom calls and things like that. I've crossed 50 live calls, zoom calls. And I consider myself being stealth. You keep doing the same thing again and again and again. You start to see improvements over time. And you can even go back to recording. It's amazing. You can have a look inside of the accelerator calls and you can see my background, my branding is completely off. I was nobody. I had like throws over jackets, big like pink throws over jackets and stuff like that behind me. It didn't matter. I was still produ it was pr still providing value. But You've, you've got to you've got to keep going out there and, and doing out doing something that you know that you're you're hoping to to become better at and if you keep doing it again and again and again continue to believe in yourself because those things will start to change you won't notice it but when you look back at the road that you've just gone it will become so much more clearer and you then can stand in front of everybody else and say i am now doing this 
I didn't yeah. expect to be working inside of this program. But when we when we talk about like fine tuning with what, instead of becoming omnipresent, in a sense where I need to do Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, Google, YouTube, YouTube. Yeah. one thing. Yeah, pick that and get great at it, you know, and, and so, it so, boils down to, I, I keep pushing people and saying, look, it's about your audience and understand cool. what your audience wants and then just being consistent with what you're putting out there so that you can connect with them, right? So guys, if you've got questions, now's the time to, to ask. Question. I mean, Darren and I can keep chatting. I have a question, Darren. So you said, like, keep doing what you're doing. It's Paul here. I can oh, see hey, you. I know you're trying to find me. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. <laughs> so let's say, for example, let's say if I'm doing the, my advertisement or launching my pl- uh, program on Facebook, I should concentrate on Facebook, you mean? Don't touch uh, LinkedIn or anything else? Yeah, because you're trying to look at stats. You're trying to measure all these different things, and we don't quite understand them all yet. Now, if, you're, if your superpower is like YouTube or Instagram or anything else like that, amazing. Do that. Because some people have already done really well with TikTok. Inside of the program, there was a guy who was 50 years old, and he said, my thing is TikTok. I'm just going to go and keep doing that. And when he released some of these videos, he's still inside of the group. They were fire. And he, he, his audience went like 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Now, how he communicates after the, off the back of that is different because you'll, you'll then have, okay, I'm great with videos. Then how do I collect those leads and how do I communicate with them? Same with Messenger, same with uh, Facebook. What do I do? What do I put out there? Is it post? Is it, do I add people? Do I message them? And what do I say if I get them on a call? So if you focus in on just that one thing and master that one thing, eventually, if you move on to a better different platform, you're only just learning that first, that front end, that front end thing that you need to be doing. And eventually it's the communi- communication if you're doing things organically, which is really you talking to somebody else, whether it's yeah, your messenger. So, when he's talking, so guys, when he's talking about the organic side, so you can set this up so that you're running the ads and it's just running auto through, right? And, and when we're focusing on the partner program versus the affiliate, and, and that's you know a bit different. But so this is absolutely something that can be fully automated. And I, if you wanna go 100% organic, and you want to close organically at a higher level, personal communication helps that. It's not 100% necessary, guys. It's not. It's one element that Darren's doing that some others are doing that others aren't, right? It depends on how you want to do it and what your end goal is. You know, whenever we're talking about this, like when I'm talking about LinkedIn and we're talking about Instagram, you know, I didn't get it much into TikTok, but we brought it up. Part of this is just opening up your eyes to say there are possibilities out there, right? And, and but once you you're stepping into it and you're going, this is, this is what I'm going to do, then do it, you know, and, and you don't have to do the, the squirrel shiny object syndrome everywhere, right? That, that's one of the biggest problems. So when I'm talking about all these different social media apps is it's, there are a lot to choose from and a number of them will work. What you need to do is figure out which one you're going to do. And if you decide to add a second, okay, but it's not, this one isn't working. So I'm going to try this. Oh, I did this for two weeks. I'm not doing it. So now I'm going to try this now. I'm, oh, I haven't done this. So like we've talked about organic reach takes time on any platform. So you've got to take time. So um, let's see who is Gina. I've talked a little Gina, you and I can talk a little bit more about partner affiliate and accelerator. Darren can get with you. Um, but we've already broken those down a bit. So, cause some people aren't as familiar on this, the accelerator is something you, we typically go over in the uh, strategy session. The partner program is what every single one of you guys that's on here ha- has the partner program. The affiliate program is a little bit different. I don't spend a lot of time talking about the affiliate program just because affiliate marketing in general, if you don't have any audience and if you've never done anything is, is a doggy dog and, it, and it's, a tight wire that you're walking so you don't get shut down by Facebook. Like it's a whole other world. So um, anyway, let's see. Um, David's asking integrating branding. So he's asking about EQ, Darren. So I would talk this week, I talked a little bit about emotional intelligence and then motivating and converting leads into sales. So I think really what we're talking about is when you're talking about branding, EQ, motivating, that is, from that to converting into sales, that's a sales funnel. So let's talk about that in general. And then we can talk about the pieces of how would you define like 
a sales funnel sales process when it comes to internet marketing? Like, what are you doing with the customer? You know what I mean? Yeah. So with, with a lot of my customers, I'm either touching base or just adding them. And then even without a communication, my branding on my personal profile and how it communicates the messaging that's on there, whatever is felt from them, I get to see it. They get, they, they actually send me a voice message saying, Darren, you, you, your, your cover is absolutely awesome. Who did it? So there's a first connection point right there. Now, those people that start going through and digging through my own personal profile and my posts and everything, they're starting to have a feel of who I really am. They're starting to form a connection. And someone, someone recently, I think about maybe two weeks ago, he mentioned that th- this stuff is, this, this stuff is amazing. Like how long, how long have you been doing this for? And I don't really post that much, to be honest, if you have a look at how many, the dates, but it's incredible, incredible to see how many people actually go, so far deep into your personal profile just to decide whether they want to buy with you or not. And I haven't even mentioned anything about buying. I like to sell without sell with sell without selling. And right. so you're adding I value mean, and content consistently and, and delivering that. Yeah. And they, that's how you are. So, all right. So you're, you're taking them from that. They get to know you a little bit there. Yeah. The curiosity gets built up because of all of that. And then now we start this process and what you guys got to understand. So a, a, an overall sales funnel, there's the sales funnel as a concept. There's the funnel pages, pieces, you know, this button, that button, but everything you do is part of a sales funnel. You guys got to understand that everything you do is part of it. The top part is all of this stuff that you're putting out, the initial contacts and everything until you start to bring them through. And that's going to be through motivation or branding or, you know, something that you posted, some kind of quality content somewhere that brings them in. And then you start, you know, you're, you're putting out the little fishing lines over and over and over till you get those bites and then you start pulling them in. Um, So when, when someone asks you, what's the most important part? Cause I always love this question. What's the most important part of the funnel? What do you say? The most important part of the funnel for me is the messaging. It's how, it's how it conveys that message, whether it's seen, heard, and whatever else you see along the way, somehow something will connect with that person and will allow them to think, okay, I want to stay on this a little bit longer. And whether it's you first or whether it's your personal profile or the messaging on your funnel, it's that that connects that some someone will connect to you and say, Hey, that, that looks incredible. That, that looks amazing. And they might have that issue of, uh, I've already purchased so many different like, uh, eBooks. And then I'm able to talk to them, say why it's different. And then they can, and then they have, they, they build a know, like, and trust with you really quickly. So the messaging, it counts most for me. What about you? What would you say? Everybody hear that? The know, like, and trust that messaging. See how we're all, Darren and I are on the same page with all this stuff. It's almost like we study it once in a while. Um, <laughs> so I, I would say yeah, it's, it's, all, it's, it's all about the message, <clears throat> but there's so many different ways that that message is portrayed. Right. And so it's, I was talking with Randy earlier and, and it's your uh, copy, right? Like how quality is your copy? Because that's a huge part. But where that plays in, that's the headline. That's that's the messaging. In you know, am I connecting with my, um, you know, with my audience versus, you know, just myself, or or am I not paying attention? I'm just trying to put out a message because hey, I need to put it out, right? Um, so, well, I mean, building yours. So Kim, you're talking about like you've got one with Blake's funnel. Right. There's not like the messaging that you you've got to focus on is on that front end, getting them to it because Blake's got a funnel with the partner program that you guys get to use that we know converts. It's not like you have to rewrite it from scratch. You've got something that we know works and the way it's built up and the way it's set up. There's all of these different elements that we know help convert higher. So your messaging is more your front end and connecting with the audience and then your ad to get them to what we know will work right? If you get them there, awesome. So Gary, talk with your, when you, when we get it set up, get with your accountability rep, get on the um, strategy session call. You can, all of you guys at any point are, are welcome to go through the modules, right? We're not putting reins on you. It's, you know, I feel like, and I, I know some of you guys have gone through the strategy session. I feel like 
there's a little bit of value there on occasion. You know, I feel like we put a little bit into it. So hopefully you get something out of it. Um, I haven't too, had too many people that have pushed back on me and, and said it's just, you know, a waste of their time. So hopefully you guys get something out of it. But the point is, is you can take this business, you know, and run with it as fast as you want, or you can take a breather and just get it done, you know, step by step, right? But as to what the most important, I think there's so many different elements that are important. A lot of times we, we do overthink it. We think about certain things just more than we need to be. Um, so let me ask you this. So you, you mentioned the personal. How do you utilize personal versus like a business page? I purely just use personal. I don't even like using a business page personally for me. You're not running ads though, right? No. So what about people that, that are looking to run ads and do other stuff? Because then you've got to use the business. Yeah, absolutely. You need a page and then connect a particular user to that page inside a business manager and to be able to use, a, use uh, the tool with Facebook. Now, um, Facebook is kind of here and there with business right now. Like I got restricted the other day and all I needed was my ID check. That was all. They changed um, all the time. I was talking about that the other day. Like yeah. I did something stupid and boosted a post to show people that it's worthless to boost a post. And right. I had, you know, I had shit written in there and got my, <laughs> so I had to go back. Like I wasn't even paying attention. I'm like, this one's good. And I, and I boosted it. And then I'm like, why is my account? What's going on? Yeah. And I just, I went in and deleted it and they fixed it. But yeah. So you got to be careful. That's something I tell people to do is, you know, check out the, uh, the terms of service to not do things that they tell you not to. Cause a lot of people just don't pay attention and they just, yeah. you know, think they whatever they want. So, all right. So there's a question. He's talking about a, what message would you put on to your Facebook to generate leads? Um, there's different, I mean, there's so many different answers to that. Yeah. Uh, did you want me to touch on the the advertising side of things first and then go on to that message? Sure, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so with the advertising side of things, I mean, we could always like uh, page hack. So we can go to the page transparency and have a look what Blake is already doing for advertisements. Um, we could go to any of the page as well, like have a look at any of the marketer that are, that are doing really, really well. Anthony Morrison, Adrian Morrison, Ty Lopez, Grant Cardone. They're doing a lot of videos, videos stick, but it's not only, it's not the only thing that they're using as well. Blake's also using his own brand page to start uh, bringing an audience to the page as well. He started to season that out and start say, started doing his lives over there too. And if you're amazing with being on video, great. If you're amazing with doing your content, great. Start using all these other different platforms and just figure out what would suit what platform like your personal will be different to your business. It doesn't mean that you can't use this same same post over here, but I would stagger it. Now, if you don't stagger it, it'll end up like just coming. If you're If that person is following that page or liking that page or is, is following you or is a friend of yours, all of this becomes chunked together inside of the Facebook wall. And so you don't want that happening because it looks like you're spamming yourself. Right. And if you end up, if you end up doing advertisements and things like that, the best thing to go forwards with is actually find out what's actually, what are you, when you're scrolling as well, what's stopping you from, from scrolling further? What's caught yeah, your what's attention? Your attention. So I've talked about this before. So when we're looking at ads and, and how do you get Paul, what kind of message? It depends on your audience, but what you're trying to do is get a call to action. This is your, I've talked about on the branding, it's the market dominating position. It's what are you going to say that is, you know, I know what you've got that you, uh, I know what you want that you don't have or what you have, but you don't want what you want, but you don't have, right? Like it's the headline, what's going to capture them, you know, for their business. And then your content that you're posting is bringing them back around. And like he's saying, so I'm not always posting the same thing. Um, it's not always sales. I'm trying to get a message out. That's content. That's valuable. I'm trying to get them engaged. So that's surveys. It's, it's questions about the industry. It's, Hey, did you see how, the, what's going on? Like if you're doing working with a financial advisor, I would have been talking about over the last couple of weeks, I would have been talking the hell out of wall street and, and Robin hood and GameStop, right? Like create conversation around that stuff. Right. It, I mean, it still should be going on, you know, mutual funds versus, you know, working with with, um, you know, Reddit advisors versus having a financial advisor. What do you guys think? Like you're trying to connect with your audience. So the perfect thing to message is just it, it depends on who your audience is, but you're trying to connect with them. Right. Um, Felicia is asking about how a funnel works versus a website. So. Again, so there's the concept of the funnel and then there's the 
technical pieces of. A funnel is any process that you take someone through that takes them from a cold prospect through a step-by-step -step process, helping them understand a little bit more info, step by, you know, you're spoon feeding them info until they come to an emotional and a logical decision to purchase what you've got, right? That's, that's what you're taking them through. Now, difference between a website and a funnel, Darren, what, what would you say the actual pieces of, what are the biggest differences? I covered this yesterday on the live. So essentially like a website, you go into it, it's like a maze. You don't know what to do, what, where to go next. So many things to click on. Whereas a, web, whereas a funnel, it has one objective. What do we want to do on the first page in the, with the Blake's Partner Program, Social Media Lead Machine? It's to capture the name and email. The next is the second step on the two-step order form. It's now the credit card information. They can actually, they don't have to um, wait on medical records. That's not how workers comp works. Off of that initial report that shows that your wrist is broken, from then on, once um, you find I don't think case. that's you, you yeah. guys. <laughs> can somebody okay, so, be, can keep an eye on whoever that was? Yeah, so uh, with with the funnel, um, you are, you're looking for the one thing. So the first thing, name and email, and maybe a phone number. Next thing is credit card information. Do you want this product? Oh, just before you leave, just like in a checkout, do you want this as well? The order form bump, the 1,000 followers viral posts. It's an option there. The next page. Your, your OTO, your one-time offer, right? Yeah. And the next page, you have your masterclass sale. Yeah. Do you want it for this price? If not, then it's one thing on each page, making There's everything simple. Yeah, the thing that a lot of people don't understand a website, because I do, you know, along with this stuff, guys, I, I do some business consulting. We talk with people with websites and what most businesses don't have, because this is part of what you're doing with your marketing. This is so not just you understand, but part of the message that you're getting across to them, a lot of them have a website. Most of the time, the website is, yeah, it's a maze someone's talking about. It's, it's an online brochure, most of them. And nobody buys anything from a brochure. How many of you guys have been in a sales situation where you said, you know what, just let me have some of your info, give me a brochure and, and I'll get back with you. Most of the time, that's what most websites are set up as. They don't have a call to action. They don't have any kind of headline. There's nothing there to get someone to take the next step. A funnel is designed 100% to go from start to finish. I understand what's going on. I've got a, a solution for your issue. Listen to what, here's this first one. You know what, if that's going to help you, this next one's really going to help you, man. If that helped you, you should really check this out all the way to credit card. Boom, boom, boom. And then once that credit card's in, Hey, we're going to offer them something again, because who's the best person to sell golf lessons to it's the person that just bought the golf clubs. Right? So that's, that's what you're doing over. That's the, the mechanics of a, an online funnel, like the partner program that Blake's got built out here. Whereas most websites don't have that step-by-step -step process for you. It's like, contact us, you know, about us. Here's our background. Here's our services. And that's it. It's a brochure. So the funnel is I'm taking you from here to there. So how do you turn, you know, um, someone from, you know, the nothing to, um, you know, from a cold lead into a loyal customer, delivering value over and over and over again. Absolutely. You know, you know, we recommend click funnels. If you want to find something else, you, there are a number of different things out there, but you'd have to do that research. We're set up in click funnels. And so, you know, if you want to do something else, then that's, that's your call. Here's, here's a, here's something to piggyback off the back of that. With one of my students at the Philip Lee's machine, I challenge, he actually said to me, I don't have enough money to get into the program, to the Blake's partner program. He came through my Philip Lee's machine. He went through my funnel. He got the blueprint, the 1000 followers and the masterclass. And so he had enough money to get into that. Yeah. So it was in a 14 day trial in it's, seven it's, days. It's, it's just the mindset and what you want to do. It's a business expense. It's a tax write off. It, you know, it, if you're going to have a business, like if I'm going to be a plumber, I need a vehicle. I got to buy a tool. I need, you know, the right equipment. I actually, I got a plumber that's about to knock on my door. I mean, it's just taking those steps guys. Yeah. Um, and also yeah. um, in the, in the seven days, he did his funnel in the first four days on day five, I got his first click funnel sign up of which when that person stays with that person, after the 14 days, they'll become a monthly recurring revenue. On day seven, he did a thousand dollar sale, which is someone he invited into the Blake's partner program. And so that paid for firstly what he got into, my affiliate machine, 
yeah. and the next two, three months of ClickFunnels as well in the 14 day trial. Inside of the inside of the accelerator, and we have a module where it says "Earn while you learn." I show you over the shoulder. In yeah, so Felicia, uh, if a client wants ClickFunnels, do we convert? I'm you know, if you want to provide a service where you change their, if they've got a website, they can have a funnel too. You don't need to convert anything. You can change the website so that it works better if you want to provide that as a service. But that has nothing to do with what we're doing. That's a totally different service if you want to provide it. That's getting into web design, you know, website management, content management. Some people on the call provide it. I, I mean, I provide it, but that's totally different from what we're we're going into here. Um, you don't have to do anything. So Gary's asking, are we doing it under Facebook's radar? You don't, you don't have to do anything under Facebook's radar as long as you're doing things on the up and up. You know, as long as you're not making any weird claims. You know, posting a link versus running an ad are two totally different things. Um, Facebook hasn't shut Blake down. He's still advertising. And then you can do things organically too. You, you know, and what we just said, like you can get an ad account shut down and then get it turned right back on. As long as you're not doing things you shouldn't be doing. Right? Um, I don't know who just came on. Somebody's audio is kind of goofy. Absolutely. So, so um, just to touch on what Gary was saying, like what if Facebook shuts Blake down? In the training, we talk about opening more than one account. Over time, you were able to do so. And so he safeguarded. I think he has seven or eight accounts. He got shut down on one, but he was still able to operate. So it's all good. Yeah. There's And, and that's why, you know, like I've got Facebook. I, I do some on LinkedIn. Um, I'm start, I'm in the middle of starting a YouTube, right? And, and now I'm not doing all of it. I'm outsourcing certain aspects because I've, I've talked to you guys about it. You, you know, I don't need to master all of YouTube marketing and, and keywords and content because I'm going to have somebody else do it so I can focus on what, what I'm doing, right? Um, you know, you don't have to do, they call it white hat, black hat. You don't have to do black hat stuff unless you're trying to do something shady. So, the, you know, there's nothing shady here. If you get something shut down, it happens sometimes. And a lot of times it's on accident, like they flag you for the wrong reason. Or sometimes they just change their service and they go, you know what, I'm not sure about this ad. And so they'll flag it and they'll, they'll restrict your, um, you know, they'll restrict your access for a bit and then you need to change it. I mean, you'll get ads that are disproved, you know, not approved all the time. That happens. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's part of it and it's not always yeah. correct. So yeah, he got his account back anyway. It was just yeah. during the political event. So yeah. Um, yeah. And, and anytime that there's politics going on, there's always more issues with everybody. Everybody's account has issues. Um, someone's asking how long it takes to recover the cost of the program. It totally depends on you. It could be two days. It could be two months. It could, I mean, it depends on you putting in the work, depends on what your niche is, depends on if you're running ads, depends on if you're going organic. There's a hundred different ways to answer that question. It's kind of like saying, how long is it going to take me to, you know, graduate college and make my money back? Well, I don't, what, you know, what career are you choosing? How long are you going to be in college? Which college did you go to? How hard are you going to work? What's, what was your loan amount? I mean, there's all sorts of different um, answers to that question. Yeah. So, the one that I would go to is like launching perfectly because I tried to launch perfectly and I was slow at this. And now that we've refined the process, it's a lot quicker. We have a doctor in there who's, done, who's launched the funnel within two weeks inside of the accelerator, which is super cool. She's not the only one as well. There's been a few people that have jumped on this onboarding call and they've done really well. Um, but what I want to say is like launching perfectly. If you try to launch perfectly, you'll never launch yeah. ever. Yeah. That's with everything guys. I, I was talking with someone this morning. They go, you know, I, I want to wait until the right time. And I went, you know, never in life is it going to be the right time. There's just never a moment where it's right. Um, Gary, the, you can, you can put your link for your funnel. So you get the one funnel, one niche, and you can put that link anywhere. If you want to start it on TikTok, put it on TikTok, the same one on Facebook, everything else. The second, the 10 K is a, a, a different niche, a different category, not necessarily a different platform. Right. Um, I hope that answers that. So David's asking SMS texting, follow-ups, analytics trends. What do you think there? Oh, those. <laughs> when I've mentioned about my funnel text, my funnel tends to send a text out. When I'm speaking to people, it becomes a selling point. They're like, what? Does it really? I said, yeah, I remember I was on a call six days later, a text message was sent out to my, to my phone. It was pattern interrupt. I actually lifted my phone out of the cradle. 
and I was on a live call with, with the group, not with the accelerators, way before I was the accelerator coach. And it was a pattern interrupt. Clear example of like, who sends a text message these days? It's all about Facebook and WhatsApp and any other uh, Wi-Fi or internet connected platform. But with the analytics and everything like that, personally, I don't check them. I haven't got time for that. It, I know it works. And when I look back at it and I have a look at what, what really works, I continue to keep doing it. And that's why I've decided to stay with organic. And it's not to say that, that uh, ad, advertising doesn't work because it clearly does work. Um, Blake's doing super well with it. He's still running his ads. He's running his, he actually, December we time. He, members, he, we got some members spending a lot on ads. I spend on ads. I mean, it, there's, it's what I say all the time, guys. How many times have you heard me say there's different ways to scale your business. Yeah. Ads is a great way to do it if you learn it. Organic yeah. is an awesome way to do it if you learn it, right? Yeah. I mean, it's there is no one size fits all. And that's what I've tried to hammer over and over and over again. People ask, what's the best? Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Organic, organic traffic means you're not paying for it, Gary. So I did some training on the high performance calls over the last couple of weeks. We've done some on organic, but whenever you guys hear organic versus paid, the, you know, it's paid ads or organic means I'm doing the work and I'm not paying for it. Now, it, at some point, some of those things will generate a little bit of traffic on their own. Maybe someone likes it and comments and their friends and they get a little bit of that. But typically organic means you're working more yourself to get it going so that you're not putting money out of pocket, but I'm, I'm using human capital to generate it versus cash and credit capital. Right. So there, there's, there's that. Hope so let's carry up from there as well. Like if you, if you get to the pain point where you've realized that, okay, I don't want to be doing all of this myself. One, you can either VA, use a VA or use some automation. I've got to the point where I felt, I felt that pain, pain point and I'm actually using automation, safe automation of which that has allowed me to have more conversations. And I can tell you more about that inside of the accelerator. Yeah. There's so there's some of those that are, um, you know, there are some automations, like I use automations in, in different aspects. It's not for everybody, but, and there's different ways to do it. Like if you don't do it the right way, then yeah, you can run into some issues, you know? Um, but there's a lot of different ways to, that's it. The, you know, so Felicia, do you recommend VAs? Do I have recommendations? I mean, there's a lot of different ones. There's some that I use, you know, but, um, I'm not going to get into it on this call. Um, you know, and, and it, if I occasionally, I may say, you know, I do this, it's not, and I just want to say this, it's not necessarily Blake's partner. It just happens to be someone that I work with. Blake's got partners that he works with. There's a lot of different good companies out there who you decide to work with ultimately is up to you guys. Right. So at least currently we don't have a, a preferred partner within Blake's program for VAs that I know of. I mean, there's a couple of VAs that we talk about for fiber and things, but, or, um, freelancers, but it's different than, than that. So I think the point with a lot of this guys is that there's, there's a lot of options for you. There's just, there is, you know, and, and you quit getting hung up on what's going to be best. The best thing for you right now is something, some action, just get out there, get a roll you know, yeah. and then continue to improve. Right. Yeah, that's exactly so, it because that's what I did from the beginning. I just, call, I just call, got called Biff from Back to the Future. Thank you. Actually, <laughs> the funny part about that is, is sixth grade elementary school, we did Back to the Future play musical and I played Biff. So maybe, <laughs> maybe. it's a great movie. I've been called worse. It's okay. So um, from the beginning to an active funnel, I've seen anywhere from two days to two months. It, it's so, there's so many variable guys. There's so many variables with a lot of this. There are so many. Right. My my customer who's gone from zero to 10K in 31 days is because he actually took action. He was a funnel builder and he launched his Blake's Partner Program funnel in four days. So it depends on your own experience as well. So there's so many different things that can come into play with this. So many different ones like myself, procrastination, trying to launch perfectly to those who are super experienced and those who have no experience. I remember going into the program, I think it was like four or five months into it, and I was seeing people that have never seen ClickFunnels. I hadn't seen ClickFunnels. Seeing people who are older and younger and people from the army 
and those who are older who are like really raring to go they want to pass it down as a legacy whereas those who are really young i can feel when there's when there's a stumbling block they'll fall over and they won't get up they won't they don't want to yeah and, and everybody's so different you know there's the law of averages here's the you guys have been on enough of my calls hopefully you guys have here's the average right the brutal average 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 is you're going to quit right anything anywhere any program any school anything else and and so the question is is are you average and i'm just talking statistics worldwide right forget within this program forget about that let's just look at at everywhere average is most people quit whatever they start and they get into their comfort especially if they've got something they've been doing anywhere from five to 25 years this is the thing and then they've started a number of other programs and they've quit those and they want to blame the program and I'm not saying anyone, you know, I'm not pointing to anybody here, but a lot of people come on and they've done four or five programs. They go, this didn't work, this didn't work, this didn't work, this didn't work. And my response, sometimes I want to be like, but I know someone that did, that succeeded there. I know somebody that succeeded there. I know somebody that succeeded there. Right now, I did that same thing for a long, long time. And it wasn't until I was like my mentor. And I was telling someone this, um, I want to say yesterday on a call, one of the things my mentor said, that got me in, it got me going. He said, look, Andrew. I think you can crush it at this. And I was like, yeah, that's what I want to hear. But, but how long is it going to take and how much am I going to make? And what can I, exp-? and he goes, I think you can crush it, but you got to jump in and you can't quit. And I'm like, well, but I, you know, I want to, but what do you mean? I'm not going to quit. That's not me. And he goes, no, stop. He goes up till now. Have you seen anything through? And I had to, that was that moment I had to get honest with me. Cause I tried other stuff and my decision was I'm going to become a digital marketer. I'm going to learn how to make my money using the internet. Now, does that mean that this is the only program you're ever going to promote? Probably not. Right. Not if you, you're worth your salt. Is it enough to get you where you're looking to go? Absolutely. And, and probably open a whole hell of a lot of doors if you're willing to push. Right. Gary, there is no average time. We have people that are successful. So here's the thing. How do you define successful? Well, you know, 5,000 a month and someone else go, no, that's not successful. I need to be 10. Someone else go, no, I just need to be two. There is no defined 100% solid. Here's the exact number because so many of those things are subjective. So we've had people that have been successful that have launched within a couple of days. And we've had some people that took months to launch that have been able to generate revenue. So there is no 100%. This is the only answer. I, I'm, I'm not trying to be flippant in my responses. Please understand. But that's just Andrew me. one. One thing I think is when once person have a crystal clear goal and focus, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you will become successful. I mean, that's all it takes, right? Whenever you so, master something and you keep doing it again and again and again, and I've done yeah. it again and again exactly. and again. Exactly. And what I put, what I mentioned inside of the accelerator and what I do and when I can just say on each and every call, whether it's with yourselves or with a potential customer, and when I tell them that all I need to do is just speak to seven people, that's what I aim for, or maybe five. But when you get to the point where you don't even have to worry about your own bank account anymore, it's an amazing feeling. Um, I've personally not had to touch my own bank account for the last two years. Um, I have currencies in three different currencies, euros, um, US dollars and sterling. And I have the pleasure of actually living here with my mom and sister. Whereas before I was actually living in Spain on my own. During these times, does FaceTime really cut it? Can you travel? So it's a, it's a, it's a great opportunity for, for me to be here and understand that they're just there and I can just look over. Yeah. If I wanted to leave, I could. <clears throat> I don't want to. But... I don't have to look after my bank account. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about it. And if you get to that point when you've mastered whatever you're doing, whether it's advertisements or any other platform, stay with that one thing. And when you have enough time to move, you have enough wiggle space, then have a look at other platforms. Don't try and do too many. Master that one thing. Yeah, guys. So like I did the train on LinkedIn and I know some of you guys are, are flipping out and thinking that, that you have to have that in order to launch and you don't. I'm just giving you extra stuff that you can, you know, to just open your eyes. Yeah. Right. A lot of us walk through life with too many blinders on, and we think that there's one pathway to success and there's one, 
one pathway to, to do well with the marketing. And there's only one thing that you can do here. And, and there's not, there's a lot of different ways to do it. You know, in, even if you end up working with Darren, some one-on-one, it's not like he's going to make you do only one thing. Part of this is depend, you know, it's like when I talk with people with strategies, you know, I've, I've talked with people about, you know, getting a Facebook page set up and here's a couple of things to do like brand new, never done anything to other people that are doing that are, are spending six figures online marketing every month. And they're looking to scale to that next step. Everybody's a little bit different and we can help with strategies with all of it because in, you know, anywhere you start, there's the next step. Right. And so, um, Gary, I hope, you know, I, I wasn't trying to hammer some of those points, but part of it is, you know, and this, it happens all the time. We're looking for the exact answer, right? Like, okay, well, I'm starting. So we've seen people start in legit. I I've had some people that like, by the time they get to the welcome call in 24 hours, their funnel's done because they've been building funnels for, you know, years. And then they launch and they've already got an existing audience. So within 30 days, they've hit that 10K and they're launching their second funnel because they've got it. And then you've got people that have never been on social media. You know, and I don't want you guys to be intimidated by one level of success or another, because ultimately it's where am I at in my life? What do I need to do? Where are my skill set? Am I going to learn that skill or am I going to outsource that skill? And how do I get myself to that next level? That, like that's where your focus has got to be. If the, if the focus is, well, I'm here, should I, I should be there. Okay, well, the only reason you should be there is if you're neglecting to do something on your own end and it has nothing to do with where everyone else is. And so we, we just need to remember each each step along that way. So, all right, um, let's see, difference between light bulb and laser beam. Yeah, direction, focus, everything else. Uh, crash and burn model, working on the Phoenix model. Um, no, I like, can trust myself, true confession. Well, good for you, David. Um, all right, guys, so we've been on almost an hour. We kept Darren from uh, doing other things. And, and I know, so I'm, he's probably ready to get his hat taken off and go back to. Um, <laughs> I don't mind. This is what I do. So it's all, it's all good. So, I'm here to help. Do you have any uh, parting words of wisdom for us? Never give up. Because if you do, you're never going to make it. It's harsh to hear. It's, it's not easy to hear. And if you look back, actually, there was a conversation that uh, just a, it was a couple of days ago, a guy from Australia, he, he spent $200,000 on, on on programs. I didn't realize that he was actually inside of the Black Spanner program. I redirected him back. He was distracted. Shiny object. Don't get shiny objects. That's definitely something. Once you're inside of the program, focus on that. Make sure that you only focused on that. Yes, if you have a day job. Yes, you if you have a family and all these different things. Like, if this is the thing that you want to be doing, you should be able to launch this thing within a very short period of time. That time depends on you. Focus, remove all the shiny objects, and just get the work done. As simple as that. Because we've already had semi, several, several iterations of the program already. And the iterations are improvements and changes that we're always making so that you can go and do this and hit the ground running with this as, as quickly as possible. Yeah, we're going to keep working. We're going to keep working at, at delivering some value to you guys, some training here, opportunities to open up your eyes in a lot of different ways. So please do what you can on your end, right? The homework that I gave you on here, the stuff that Darren's talking about, you've got access to you know, the modules if you want to build out or get to that business strategy call. So you know, pick my brain a little bit. Promise guys, I'll, you know, you walk away from that. If you, if you come to it with a purpose, I, I promise you'll walk out with a, a little bit of clarity in a number of different ways. So we're here to help support, lift and grow on that note. Um, real quick, before I do the official ending, Chris, hang out. Um, I'm going to need two minutes, but hang out here. And then you and I'll do a quick call. Everyone else have an amazing day. Have an amazing weekend. Say thank you to Darren. Say thanks in the Facebook group. Um, please. If you guys have questions, feel free to email me, Andrew at Blake Newbar, um, and, and we'll get you guys going. Thank you guys so much. Have a good weekend. Get your homework done. Get stuff done. Build some content. Thanks. Put something out there. Darren, thank you. Thank Andrew, you. thanks. What thank you, guys. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Thanks, Darren. Thank thank you. Thank you. Bye, Andrew. Thank you. We did our homework. I did my homework. Thank you. By the way. Bye.
I homework well completed. Homework. I've got <laughs> I've got some stuff yeah, coming you. up for some of you guys at email for sure. Bye. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much.